Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of That Sewing Blab. I, once again, have to say I'm really excited to have you all here tonight. And for those of you, and it looks like there may be quite a few of you who are new to our show, that lovely woman over there with the orange necklace on, by the way, beautiful necklace, that's Dawn King Valley, our host of the show from the blog Dueling Designs. I'm her co-host, Myra Rentmeester from the blog Simple Inspiration. And I know, oh my gosh, I know that you all <laughs> have to know the other beautiful lady in that other box there. But we'll get to her in just a moment. And believe me, I'm really excited about this too. I have goose pimples. <laughs> But I wanted to let everyone else who's new to our show that doesn't know about our show that um, we are a community-based sewing hub for all things sewing. Right here, we share interviews, we uh, host events and challenges, basically anything about sewing we discuss right here. Now, if you have a question for us, there's an ask a question link down below. All you have to do is select that link, post your question, and we promise to get to it before the end of the show. Now also, um, we know that our, um, our live streams here can be replayed both on crowdcast.io and YouTube. However, I must, must let you know that it is so much more fun and we would love, we actually encourage you to join us live stream because there's just so many things that you cannot do on a replay like when we have voting on some of our hosted events and our challenges. I mean, you can't vote on that if you're not here, as well as sometimes we have prizes for our viewers, our live stream viewers. And if you're not here, you can't get a prize. So, and it's a lot of fun. So now with that said, I'm gonna stop blabbing because I'm really excited. I wanna get started. <laughs> I'm gonna pass it on over to the lovely Dawn so she can get our show started for tonight. Done, you ready? Oh, yes. Um, yeah, Meyer and I are trying to keep it under control, but we're kind of geeking out a little. Um, we're very thrilled that we have Angela Wolf on the show this evening. Now, it normally falls to me to introduce the person who's coming on the show, but how do you introduce Angela Wolf? I mean, she is like so multi talented, multifaceted. Um, she has done so many amazing things. I don't know how she sleeps, let alone fishes. I mean, she is. Uh, <laughs> designer, pattern maker, educator, sewing icon. Um, she is so many things, uh, author, writer, consultant, mentor. Um, yeah, you guys, you guys who follow her know, but I think, you know, at, at the heart of it all, she is someone that is able to take her passion for sewing and get it across to people very easy, easily, no matter what media it is. And I think that's what makes her special. She gets her personality across while explaining what sometimes can be confusing. Sewing, even to someone who's been sewing for a while, there's it, you know things that can be like, oh, how, how's that gonna work? But she manages to make it all very straightforward and simple. So we are like, yeah, Meyer and I are geeking out. We are thrilled yes. that Angela is on the show. So thank you for joining us tonight, yes. Angela. Yes, well, thank yes. you for having me. I had to like pinch myself for a minute. You're awesome, Don. <laughs> <It's laughs> thank, thank you, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Cool. Okay, Don, you want to start with the first question? Yeah, we, we normally ask this, um, speaking about geeking out, um, we were hoping to know a little bit about your origin story. I mean, having read a lot of the bios on you, and there are lots of articles and things, but we would love to hear it from you. Um, what started, what was that initial spark that got you sewing? I actually, my mom, I'm the oldest of five kids, and my mom started sewing for all of us. It, we have humorous outfits for I there's three girls and two boys and so we always joke that we were always matched up and so are our dolls and you know we always <laughs> joked about but now we're thinking oh my gosh she spent so much time but I started sewing when I was about six um five or six and I started designing at a very young age I, I never designed for dolls I always designed for myself I always think of when somebody writes I designed for my Barbie I'm like gosh I never thought about that <laughs> I started designing with myself and then I designed all through high school, and then I went to college for engineering. I wasn't allowed to go for fashion design because you can't make any money at that, right? Oh, <laughs> and, um, so when I got out, I started my business. But it was a passion of mine. I've loved it since forever. I mean, I've had a few burnout stages, but um, it just has always been something that I've done. And I, I, that's why I always also encourage 
mothers that let your kids sew at any age because I there was even a photo of me when I was three and I made this pathetic scarf <laughs> but it was so cute and I remember sewing and remember the machines back then were like they could sew through your arm and I'm sewing this little thing and my mom says now don't touch that and so I, I would always sew when she'd leave <laughs> probably <laughs> would have gotten in trouble but it's just been ingrained I think I was well I guess it's just a gift wow oh my gosh well I noticed that you said that you know you didn't go to fashion design school because you weren't going to make any money. So you haven't had any actual professional training when it comes to sewing, have you? No. And I think that is a big thing with a lot of sewers, especially if you go into business for it, that you think, well, I didn't go to school for it. So what am I going to do here? You know, I have to have a training or I'm not good enough. So that was a really difficult thing for me. Well, first off, it was pre-YouTube days. Not that I'm that old, but YouTube's very young. <laughs> and so my husband-to-be, I met him right out of college, and he would haul all of my books, which was usually six every weekend with all my highlighters, down to the boat, <laughs> and he finished, and I would read, and I would study, and I would study techniques. I loved couture sewing. So I would study the technique, and then I would go back home that whole next week and test it on garment uh, until I had it mastered. And then I would do the next week of six books and just – continued on and then I just had a fashion show with all my garments and started doing sewing on people and those poor first ladies they were my fitting <laughs> what would you call them well they're all still fitting the ones that are alive <laughs> so it was wow. all a test wow well I know Dawn mentioned a little bit earlier when she was introducing you about the fishing and I was actually going to bring that up too because I had heard um, on somewhere in reading about you that yeah you did mention that you when you go fishing, but do you actually? I I just heard you say you would do something else while your husband fished. Do you fish? <laughs> I do now. At the beginning, oh. I just loved being outside. So he'd haul my books and I would lay in the sun and read my books and he would fish. Now we fish professionally. We have a. Uh, tournament circuit, which is right now from April to May, we fish, or April to September, we fish every weekend on Lake Michigan salmon tournaments. Last weekend, we came in third. <laughs> Yay. So I, what, what do I, I've named this work hard, play hard, because I run down to the boat, but our boat's big enough, so on Fridays, I usually bring my laptop and get all of my, you know, stuff done that's not sewing related, and uh -huh. uh, it's kind of a combo of both, but I do fish, <laughs> and well, I, I was going to touch the fish. <laughs> Well, I was going to ask that question because that was one of my questions when I heard you say that in one of your videos. I was like, oh my gosh, how the regarding life balances and all the stuff, you have, how do you find time for fishing? I know. If I couldn't work on the boat, it would be difficult because I, I really do probably work well. You two are entrepreneurs, you know, <laughs> you, you never stop. I mean, it, it's always from super early morning till late at night, but I have a different balance now than when I'll go back for a couple years when I was just sewing and doing nothing else. This is way pre social media days. Even I don't even, you know, you, how did you grow your business? You handed out business cards and you went to events. I sewed for probably 10 hours a day, never leaving. I called it my, now I call it my 20 years of boot camp because I sewed for customers, designed clothes for customers, worked on a ready to wear line and that was my training but you burn mm -hmm. out really easy after that and after about seven eight years i had one burnout and then i reorganized but when now things are so different because i love being on social media now there's sometimes like sundays usually i turn it off just to get away yeah. <laughs> but you know you have like on facebook i, I consider these like my well, of course, not 12,000 friends, but <laughs> thousands of friends from all over the world that, you know, you just look forward to hanging out with them. It's so different now. So I don't, it doesn't feel like work. Now I do a lot of work, but um, mm -hmm. if I wasn't able to take the computer and work remotely, then I wouldn't be able to do the lifestyle that my husband's an entrepreneur too. So we both kind of fit it in. <laughs> Oh, so he's going to be very supportive and understanding of how busy you are. And mentioning how busy you are, I know Dawn wants to get in here, but I had saved something that I just want to say. The amount of things that she has going on here, let me pull this up just so I can read from this. Oh, my God. For those, anybody out there that's viewing right now, just listen to this. I mean, her 
what she has on her page um, on her website, and it's called Meeting Angela. She is a fashion designer, an author, a spokesperson. She has It's So Easy TV. She's a consultant. She's a blogger. Um, let's see, professional fishing, she just mentioned. Um, she also is a contributor to Threads and So Stylish magazine. And I am sure that there are some things that she's probably still doing that she doesn't even have listed there. So my hat's off to you <laughs> because <laughs> I can, it is almost an impossibility for somebody to do so much. Can you um, tell us a little bit about um, first? Well, let me pass it over to Dawn. I want to ask this question later because I have more follow up questions to it. So I'll pass it over to Dawn and let her get in here. <laughs> I guess I just asked from what Myra said. Um, do you have a, a system to organize yourself? Do you have like a, a planner or uh, do you use your phone? Like, cause yeah, what Myra said is true. Like um, guest posts for brother, you're an, a brand ambassador, all those fabulous things you do. Like, I don't know, literally I'm sitting here wondering how would you possibly keep it straight? Are you doing a, a, a post for them? Are you doing one for you? Are you doing a live video? What projects for what? Like, how do you really keep everything straight? Yeah. Well, it, it's, it gets tricky, but I do have, I have spreadsheets that I print off every Monday that are a checklist because on top of all that, I have online classes, Craftsy alone, I have 140,000 students in seven classes and you have to go in and answer the questions. So, and then pattern review, my own site, I've started now with online classes. That's the most important because those are the people that are paying for online teaching. And then I try to, you know, engage with them answer their questions, whatever. But I actually had to start having a checklist where I just like, and this sounds so silly, Instagram, check, <laughs> Facebook, yeah. check, Facebook group. Because if you don't scan it, somebody might have asked you a question. And it doesn't mean you have to answer every question, but I really try. I think the most challenging is the Facebook Live shows. I go back and you can ask a lot of people that watch that show. I'll go back that night and for the next three days and make sure that I either like their post or comment on their post to let them know that I really appreciated them being there. And if they were saying something about the show, I think engagement's the biggest thing. And I don't care if someone has 10 fans or 10 million fans, it gets a little, you know, it takes time. I write handwritten notes with all of the orders that go out. If I, if I'm out of town, my husband writes the handwritten note. <laughs> I used to have an assistant uh, a couple different times, but in the creative business, and I don't know about you girls, but you could probably confirm this a little bit. Of course, you have the business side, which takes like at least 50% of what you're doing, the consulting, things like that. I love that. But the, I hate the billing. <laughs> That's my <laughs> favorite. But I might go into the office and have a schedule of, I have to tape four videos today, but I have a migraine. What are you gonna do? You can't mm -hmm. do it. So you're gonna have to do it the next day. So you really have to be flexible. And if you have, I don't have anybody working with me now because of the fact that if I go in and I'm, oh my gosh, I'm not supposed to tape videos till tomorrow, but I feel great today. I'm going to do it today. So I have to be really flexible on, you can't go into the video or especially with the live videos, you can't go in and not have your, be on your A game. And that's probably the trickiest thing I think with social media. One of the main reasons I started Facebook live was because I had uh, the host or anchor, whatever you want to call it, of it's so easy for since it started, but mm -hmm. PBS has very strict rules. The only other place people saw me were in situations where it was either for brother, for it's so easy, or where everything was regimented. And I remember telling my husband, nobody knows my personality. <laughs> I'm gonna start <laughs> Facebook Live and see if anybody shows up. <laughs> and that gave me a release to show my personality and it also helped me to grow my business because when you have all these people show up to say, I love your pattern, or I'm wearing your top, or you inspired me, that's what keeps me going and that's what keeps a lot of people going uh, yeah. and you can see in the comments a lot of people denise uh i love the facebook shows veronica uh, loves your win as well your husband <laughs> angela is saying angela is the best facebook live host ever and having watched uh watched quite a few facebook lives i would have to agree you have a great presence but it's true you're always engaging with people like you know if um i'm not know if i'm saying your name right jude Jean oh, Jude, yes. <laughs> if she's moving, you know, like you'll talk it up in the audience. Like you, 
you know about the people who are watching the show and it comes across that you care about them and that you are trying to educate them but also hang out with them so it is a lovely mix in your facebook live so if you're out there and i imagine on the replay maybe a one or two people might not have seen one of your Facebook lives. Everyone else must have. So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but definitely tune in. Um, they are they are really good. I mean, because you throw a lot of information in those too. Because like you might be working on something for brother, or you might have something from brother in the background, but you still talk about it. So you might be doing embroidery, freeing jeans. Like it is. There is a lot of information in those, but it doesn't feel like you're cramming it all in. It's more like hanging out with someone and just having a chat. So thank you for saying that, because, you know, you never know. And my husband's always like, you give so information, so much information. Why don't you pick like four items, which is what I have. I've actually restructured, you know, I have to, I've been doing it for over a year and you kind of learn what works, what doesn't work. And um, but, but what you just said makes my day because that's what I want it to feel like. And that is my real personality to I'm hanging out. And a lot of these people I've gotten to know, not in person, but just through wa watching what they're sewing, watching what they're doing. And then you get to know their kids and stuff like that. It's like I have a huge family. <laughs> oh, yeah. And one who loves you very much. <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> well, with everything that you have and, and the multitude of people that you actually inspire, um, because you do, I, I I can't even, I don't believe we can even count the numbers here of the people that you inspire. Where do you get your inspiration from? Um, that's funny. I, I um, well, a couple things. Uh, my persona, just who I am, at this, people might think this is odd, but um, I have for, since I was 27 years old, because my dad was diagnosed with cancer, so it was kind of a traumatic thing in our family. I started mm -hmm. to go to daily math. And um, I've been doing it ever since. So how old am I now? Much older. <laughs> so 20 years. <laughs> so this is my life. I live in a small town, although I travel a lot. But I live in a small town, four miles to the church and three miles to my office, <laughs> two miles yeah. to lunch, and then back. If it ever takes more than 15 minutes to get home, I'm a mess. But um, I think my spiritual life in all aspect is who, why I am who I am. And I also have a deep compassion for people of whoever they are. I mean, I don't care what anything about them, where their past has been, where they're going. Um, everybody has a story and I have just, I love hearing what they're doing and I really care. So if I meet you somewhere or somebody, I mean, even like the ones that don't like me, I get a few of those too. <laughs> Everyone has a story. And I feel that that spiritual base is what gives me that compassion and understanding for people. And that's, basically where I'm grounded. Oh After that, goodness. it goes where it flows, right? <laughs> <laughs> but just listening to you, I can't imagine anyone not seeing that because it shows as soon as you talked, as soon as you, for myself, as soon as I spoke with you, I could tell that compassion that you have for people. I mean, I, I find it very hard pressed to see anyone who would not see the same thing. So those people who are out there, Shame on you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so okay. you're also um, an ambassador for Brother International and the Daylight Company. Now, those are pretty fantastic things. Um, can you tell us a little bit how that came about and um, what the experience is like? Yeah, you know, um, you hear brand ambassador a lot nowadays. So I think there are different, a little bit different between brand ambassador and spokesperson. It's just if, if, some some brand ambassadors will just accept free product to promote their their things and stuff like that. And I have always um, promoted brands. Brother, I've promoted forever because of the fact that I was on it so easy and I started using their machines. And I've also promoted many other companies. And my husband would say, you're promoting all these people. You're not getting paid. And I'm like, it'll come back someday. <laughs> it'll come back someday. <laughs> some did, some did not. But, you know, when Brother finally, um, I think about five years ago, I started making their outfits. So I'm still designing clothes, although I'm not designing for customers anymore. I'm designing for my patterns and designing for brother for their, uh, all their new machines that come out. I design garments for, or some of their ads. I love that by the way, it's, it's a license of freedom for design where you don't have to worry about anybody's opinion, especially the bride. 
<laughs> but, um, cool. but I love that part. So I do a lot of that for them. I, I work on their machines. They're now having a sweepstakes. I think I, I sent you a link you'll have to share with everyone. They're doing the sweepstakes. They're giving away three days trips to Orlando. And I'm reading this and it said, and one hour with Angela Wolf. And I'm like, forget that, go to Orlando. <laughs> but, um, but I was included in that, which is very cool. So um, I can see the sun hitting my face. Sorry guys, I look like I'm speckled. Um, so anyways, I do that for them. I do a lot of testing on their machines. And then for Daylight, the same thing. They send me product, I test it. I love their product. And I would only represent a company that I actually use. So I've been approached mm -hmm. by many and I get a lot of free gifts from companies. And many of them never see the day of light because it might be something that I don't don't like or don't um, use so if i'm using it you know that i'm really using it and that's very important to me that's awesome oh, you, can, you can tell that in your facebook live videos there you are with your oh, oh i forgot the name of a daylight tablet is it a tablet uh, <laughs> yeah. i love um, that tablet <laughs> yeah i wasn't sure if it was called a tablet um but yeah i was like looking at that i'm like ooh, that looks lovely yeah um, well it's yeah. technically it's a light box so that's so called. all my sketching which i am the worst sketcher for a fashion designer you think i'd have like a little bit of sketching skills well i'm terrible at sketching and i'm terrible at cooking that's hands down <laughs> <laughs> but um for the sketching on that i can put my croquis below it and sketch and it looks awesome and you don't even know <laughs> so wow. that's my secret on that one <laughs> well it, it looks good um, I did mention that we'd read out some comments when they came out that were uh, lovely. And um, Janice, I hope I pronounced your name right, um, said, Angela inspired us to spread our wings and try new things in sewing that we wouldn't have tried without her. I think that is just lovely. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That is, um, so, well, stuff like that is what keeps me going. So <laughs> thank you, Janice. <laughs> yeah, and um, Jane. Jane said this, um, she said, um, love Facebook Live and love Angela, a Angela's personality. It really comes through and it comes through here too. I mean, she's just beaming through the screen right yeah. now. Yeah, oh, so. Thanks, it's not just the sunlight. Oh, I, no. <laughs> no. I was trying to determine where uh, Don knows this. And so now all of you will know this too. I said, Don, it's 7.30 at night. I don't even know. Well, usually I'm in my pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to remember not to like undress when I get back from the office and and um oh my gosh my house where am I gonna go uh, so <laughs> what you two girls missed last season was I actually took on this big renovation where I ripped wallpaper have you ever two ever ripped wallpaper no well that's totally not sewing related but I'm telling you I will never do it again as long as I live <laughs> so my husband Me goes either. go in that room and I'm like Oh no, no, it's not finished. We haven't hung the paint. <laughs> we have it painted, all my books are up, but it's not, no pictures yet. So you'll have to invite me again into my, <laughs> so I can show you my fabulous room. <laughs> yes, for that very reason is why I don't use wallpaper in my house. <laughs> that very reason, it's atrocious to take down. <laughs> I find it quite interesting that, um, I know there's been like a couple sewing shows in the past that were on TV and um, people have written books and things, but a lot of them didn't really make the transition to social media, especially the way that you did. You took to it like a duck to water, like you've really, yeah, embraced it, yes. quite honestly. So um, did you kind of have a, a feeling that it was coming uh, or how did you know that this was kind of something that would suit you? There was, there's probably three factors there. One, I never knew that I would be a teacher. Um, when I won the Passion for Fashion contest at the Sewing Expo back in 2008, I think it was, the following year, I took a ton of classes. So I didn't even know the sewing world even existed. I lived in a cave, you know, designing clothes for people <laughs> for 20 years. I'm like, this is awesome. And so then the following year, Janet Prey said, would you teach? And I thought, okay, what the heck, why not, right? So I just picked like a couple one hour classes. One was hand dyeing fabric, sewing with knits, and sewing with jeans were my three classes. They were pretty full, but not fully full. Nobody even knew who I was, right? And not that, you know, obviously the topic wasn't good either. <laughs> but at oh. that time, and so I took the classes and then all of a sudden the second day, all my classes filled up and then the comments were coming in and Janet said, you've got a knack for this. And I was like, oh, okay. And then <laughs> the next year I got the TV show and they're like, you can like, you make it look so easy. I didn't even come up with the name for the show, by the way, <laughs> it's so easy. But um, I was like, maybe I have a gift for this. I don't know. But then I realized I really love doing it. And I love meeting the people. I love going to the events. Traveling gets a little, you know, 
old, but I'm only trying to pick the bigger events this year just so I can meet, you know, more people in one event. So that was the other thing. After that, when social media started to roll in my book, actually, the book I wrote, uh, How to Start Your Own Home-Based Business, when I wrote that book, I got a letter, an email from the publisher that said, I don't know about you, but this is a sewing book, but this is the best social media section I've ever read. And asked if I would consider writing something about that. Well, I didn't, but I've studied social media probably, well, since that time, I probably spend 25 hours a week studying what's coming, what's new, what's changed. And I might listen to it on like my, in my like audiobooks while I'm working out, mm -hmm or I let it play while I'm working, anytime that I, cause it changes so fast. I mean, just think yeah. back when, I mean, I don't even remember what some of those things were called. <laughs> um, some of those other uh, ones that we don't uh, use. So if it's Facebook MySpace. now, or if it's, yeah. which one did you say, Don? It's MySpace. Yes, MySpace, remember MySpace? Yeah. <laughs> now you only hear that in a country song. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but you know, it doesn't matter what platform it is. It's all good. It's all gonna continue to change, but when I realized the engagement was so important, I thought this is my thing because these are the people that I want to meet. These are people that I want to be with. And these are the people, if they want to see what I'm teaching, this is perfect. So I really enjoy it. And even my husband, he'll sit in on the Facebook Live in case I need stuff or I'm dropping stuff and you know, it gets a little hectic in there. <laughs> uh, so he, he says there's something that when that camera goes on, he said, you just turn into something different. Like you're with those people. He said, I feel like they're in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, um, I really enjoy it. Not all of it, but 90% um, of it I do. Wow. And that's just amazing. You said that you do it all yourself, that you don't have an assistant. Right. Because the amount of um, projects that you have going on, I, most people I would think have not just an assistant, but they have a PR person, they have someone doing the <laughs> books, mm -hmm. and you're doing it all. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's all I can say. <laughs> but, um, Let's but just say that I do a tax extension until October, right? <laughs> <That's> my <laughs> least favorite thing to do. <laughs> Everything else comes first. But you know, there's so many tools out there now for an entrepreneur that's using social media. And if you would figure, a lot of them I pay monthly fees for, like Crowdcast, things like that. Um, but if you figure the cost, if you had an employee, it's a lot cheaper for all the little tools that I use to help keep all of my social media uh, organized. True, true. That, that's a good point, very good point. That is if you survive it, and it looks like you survived it. <laughs> No, um, no. Oh, sorry, Mom. You first. No, you go ahead. You go ahead. I was just going to ask you about your book. If you could tell us a little bit about your book, and ask you if you were thinking about writing another book. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> the book. <laughs> the funny part of the book is, uh, it was right when I got the TV show. It was totally unrelated, though. Some the producer had come to the Association of Sewing Design Professionals. That's an organization that I'm a member of, and had shown that they were wanted someone to write this book. So she had emailed me and said, do you have a proposal you'd like to give to us? Okay, so why not? You know, what the heck? <laughs> so I sent it and then they and then they took it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've never written a book ever. And that book, by the way, is very few pictures and it's that thick with a lot of writing. A business book for heaven's sake. I don't even remember the last time I wrote a business plan. So I had to like start all over and kind of wow. go back to square one. But I wanted, but I had already been in business for 50, well, 20 years. And I knew a lot of things that people wouldn't want to do, the mistakes. And I think I filled the book more with stories of don't do this and this is why, or you might want to avoid this, this is why, to give them real life experiences so they could understand, oh, that makes sense. Um, you know, it's like telling a kid, don't don't jump off that bridge, but then they jump anyways because they want to see just how far it is. So the book gives you enough that can help you get onto the right foot to get successful or start your career in a way without spending a lot of money, without, you know, just following your passion. And then from there, you can go on to other books. So the book was really to inspire people in any sewing, although it says how to be your own fashion designer. I included a lot about alterations, custom apparel, uh, not necessarily the embroidery business because back then I didn't I didn't embroider, but it would all be the same. Anything in the creative industry, and I I, I will never write another business book probably. I'm working on a a, a webinar series because it's live. I love that. 
that book, <laughs> I think I named all the squirrels in the backyard. I, I feel like you're just sitting there with the right business stuff. So <laughs> I'm not going to say that it was boring, but it just really didn't hit my creative vibe, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Um, Am I gonna another book? book. I, I have a couple under works uh, of my own publishing though and they're kind of in the background right now because my real focus is these online classes and um, new patterns so and that's where you can only do so much it's wow. true now I know you do a lot of you mentioned you do a lot of sewing but you don't you know do a lot for clients anymore how much time would you say you devote to sewing totally um gosh that's a good question it really depends like right now is the busiest time of year for all the products i'm doing for brothers so probably like 12 hours a day <laughs> and then running over to answer emails and stuff in between and then there's slower times of the year where i'm testing new embroidery designs or trying to come up with cute uh like for their blog i do a lot of garments i try to keep it really simple for their pro for their blog to inspire sewers to jump in with embroidery upcycling things like that so I'm always trying to come up with something new. So that's not always necessarily sewing, but testing different stitches and things like that. So I would say I probably spend on average maybe 20 hours a week sewing or embroidering wow. or something like that. Some weeks it's a lot more, some like this week <laughs> and next week. And then there's a period of time where there's it's a lot less. So it really depends what's going on. If I'm taping classes, that's a whole different thing because it's hard to set up the studio to tape an online class. Mm -hmm and then go back and forth to sewing. My studio is quite large, and I have it laid out in different areas, but I really have to like, if this week is gonna be video, then there's gonna be no sewing. Do you know what I mean? So I have yes. to kind of organize it that way or I'll make myself crazy moving stuff around. Uh, yeah, cause <laughs> behind here is all of my sewing. <laughs> oh, everything I love my, that. <laughs> everything, from my, everything that has to do for my sewing is back here. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Yes, I understand that totally. Now, um, and I, th I think Dawn might have had something to this question that I'm going to ask. But you've done a lot when it comes to designing and sewing. But do you have an absolute favorite project that you just loved working on? Be it um, a project like It's So Easy TV, or in my case, I think I'm asking: Is there a, a, a special? project that you sewed, that you had sewn, that you really loved working on? There's probably a couple. Um, well, my favorite thing ever to design, I love designing fabric. I absolutely love it. And Ooh. I love designing lace. So see-through, I call it my like um, my tattoos because I have <laughs> sheer fabric and then the beautiful embroidery. I absolutely love that. And so, like for a wedding gown. I think I sent Don a photo, a funny photo of, oh yeah, so there. Um, that's um, what I use, just it's um, tool fabric with mesh wash away, which is such an easy thing to do. I hoop it both together, make sure, making sure it's all flat. <laughs> I'm moving my hand around that picture like you can see me. <laughs> um, <laughs> making sure it's all flat, but look at the, the sleeves that I'm wearing, those are all embroidered, that's just, Wow. like a dollar oh a yard tool fabric and it's all embroidered and i think the bottom of those sleeves actually had little scanning cut uh, like little cutouts that i ironed on but i yeah. do that with everything and it's just so much fun well i could never get a tattoo wow. because i change my mind on style all the time i would be in there <laughs> having it removed like every other week so i could have a different color so <laughs> this is my way of having something oh and then the wedding dress okay so Here's a cute story. That dress, by the way, took a hundred and I want to say 140 or 160 hours. I don't really recall. Mm -hmm. This was for brother wow. a few years ago. And those are sheer sleeves with all embroidery. That is me wearing it with my hair up in a clip. I have band-aids on every <laughs> finger. That dress is all embroidered with metallic thread. And I think the skirt alone had five layers of fabric. It's it, it was absolutely stunning. They wanted me to use as many techniques as I could. So I used embroidery, I used quilting, I used the scan and cut, I used everything that I could find in that machine. And it turned out absolutely gorgeous. But metallic thread shreds your hands. And this was in December. So uh -huh. it's dry in Michigan. Yeah. And my hair looks like that because the FedEx guy is 
seriously in front of me right there waiting for me to take that off so to ship it overnight. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god. I'm like, okay, you cannot take this until I get a photo. Are you kidding? And he's like, Are you kidding? I'm like, no, I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So now what is. happens? What happens to these uh, articles uh, of clothing that you've worked so many hours on? Does that go for sale or is that in a museum somewhere? Well, actually, interesting enough, a brother had saved all those and they used them at their uh, back to business event where they would showcase them. And last year they retired quite a few of them and they said, "You should we sell them? What do you, do you want? Where do you want this stuff? And I said, you know, my studio is large enough. Could I keep these right now? And because I have... I have other lace projects I've done for them. I have, gosh, 30 or 50 outfits. So I said, could I keep them? And then if somebody's having a big event or something, I'll ship them there so they could use them or if a museum wants them. Or I did have a big showcase a while back uh, at an artist's place that I had, I don't know, 50 outfits portrayed there, like on dress on mannequins, which was very mm -hmm. cool. And I think that that's what these should be used for to inspire people. I mean, it's like a piece of art. <laughs> Yes, it is. Some people do watercolor. The reason I never quilted is because I could not imagine spending all those hours and then not being able to wear it. <laughs> but now I'm, quilting. <laughs> now I'm quilting garments, so we're good. <laughs> but um, so I, I have most of them now, so which is kind of cool. I haven't decided what to do with them, but I'm going to have to come up with something really cool. Oh, oh that's so awesome. gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It is. The work in that must, oh, wow. I can't imagine. I actually, when I first saw her, when she was sitting at the sewing machine with a tool in front of her, I thought that was her tattoos. I thought that was until you said that. That's amazing. Never seen anything like that. Oh my gosh. Is there, um, is there anything else out there like that where they're doing that kind of thing? Well, it might be. Um, well, on evening gowns, couture gowns, they've been doing that for a little while. I don't know if they're necessarily really? doing leaves but they're doing it through the the garment body i'm working on okay. a gown now that that i can't tell you or show you but it'll be finished um in two weeks and then it'll debut in august at the brother um and it this is going to be hands down my absolute favorite it's embroidery if my cat was still alive i would have embroidered him i am so addicted to embroidery i just love it <laughs> so when i started embroidering and testing on different fabrics i'm like this is so awesome because you know how expensive it is even to buy a piece of silk dupioni mm. that has embroidery on it when you yes. can add your own how cool is that right yeah true oh, I, I used to have a machine it was just a little singer and it did embroidery as well and i absolutely loved it and it broke just this weekend when i was doing my cosplay thing it was heartbreaking because i don't oh. think i can get it was like 10 years old so you can't get anything for the same amount of money but i totally understand i mean it's just one more avenue where you can put your creative flair. And I mean, you definitely do that. Like even your Facebook lives, uh, should yes. I embroider on this pant leg, <laughs> on this side, on the top and the bottom, getting people to vote on what they, they like. I mean, it's, yeah, it's a fantastic outlet for you. you in that case, you were upcycling really, weren't you? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to mean from scratch. So yeah, the embroidery thing is very exciting. So, but the sleeves, Gorgeous. gorgeous. That's There's amazing. one dress. I don't think I sent. I didn't send it to you, and I don't. I'm sure it's on Facebook somewhere. But it had. Um, uh, it was a black dress. It has one arm, and there's one sleeve. And I'll have to find it one of these. It's on there, and I'm there with the two Project Runway guys. So I went to New York for for brother. This is kind of a perk for being their spokesperson. Mm -hmm. I went there, and they said, "Could you go to this Project Runway uh, event?" Oh, twist my arm, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. And then so it's on Thursday and they want me to leave on Monday and I'm thinking I gotta have something cute to wear. So I had some mad jersey and I whipped together a dress like in a couple hours and I had this sleeve that I am that I had uh, embroidered on It's So Easy TV and it was green and blue and it had swirls. It was just stunning. So my husband comes in and he's like, Are we going up north? No, and I gotta finish my other sleeve and he's so he got real serious. My husband's awesome. We've been together over 20 years and only had two major arguments, one over the cat and one over fishing. So it'd have to be really good, right? <laughs> and he said, well, what, why, what's wrong? And I said, well, because I have to finish the other sleeve. And he said, oh, I thought one arm tops were in style now. And I said, oh my gosh, okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> they will be, and that's all I'll wear. So I put in that sleeve instead of waiting like another two hours to embroider, and that's what I wore. And there was the cutest picture of 
Anthony, Ryan, and Joshua and myself standing there, and I have my arm like this with all the embroidery. Well, my husband's not on Facebook, and he calls me that night, and he says, did you get a tattoo today? And I said, when? I did not get a tattoo. Why would you ask me that? He said, well, my phone's been ringing off the hook, and that there's some photo of you that you got, like, this whole tattoo down your arm. I said, when? It's the sleeve. Remember the sleeve? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, so, um, who are the two guys you're so cozy with? And I was like... Joshua and Anthony, right? He's like, oh, okay. All right, see you tomorrow. That <laughs> was like our whole conversation. <laughs> so the embroidery oh, passed the test, and so did Anthony and Joshua. So we were good. <laughs> oh, I, oh, my goodness. thought I found it for a second there. I'm trying to. <laughs> um, I know. I was trying to find it before the show, and I could not. There's so many pictures. It's just a there. Google search, so I'm not sure if that's, no. if that's oh, it there. That was at the event, though. Yes, that's the dress. Yes. Yeah. Wow, that so, is gorgeous. There's the front of that yes, wedding dress. Wow. And then the dress to the left wow. is all embroidered. That's Silk Dupioni. Oh, on Silk Dupioni, have you ever tried needle felting on Silk Dupioni? Don't know what it is. Okay, so if you go to, I used to always wow. go to the, like the sewing shows and you'd see like there'd be the, they'd have this pin cushion and they're sticking stuff in there. Do you think, what are they doing? They're needle felting. Okay, well that would take forever but they have needle yeah. felt attachments and needle felt machines. So it's just basically a bunch of needles that embed into the fabric like this. Uh -huh. So Silk Dupioni, which is gorgeous, you can run oh. that through that and it completely changes the hand on it. You run it through there and then you press it and it turns into a completely different fabric. It makes it more casual that you can wear it with jeans instead of for formal wear. Uh -huh. That is my mm -hmm. fun tip of the, if you want to design fabric and be totally out there. Mm -hmm. I would love to see that. It's very too. classy too. So you can do the silk dupioni and then add a little bit of embroidery. Uh, a lot of the embroidery for somebody who's just starting out and they're like, okay, so you tell me if you ever think of this. When I first heard of embroidery or everybody would talk about embroidery, I would picture like a big bunny right here, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not, you know, no, I'm happy or something like that. I'm like, no, no, no. So um, a lot, when I first started, I would actually, and I still do this a lot, use the same color of embroidery thread on the fabric or maybe just a same tint, a little bit lighter or a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. So it really looks like it's embedded in the fabric. And sometimes you'll have to get really close and say, oh, I, that's embroidered. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, whoa, <laughs> you know, yeah. Happy Monday or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's not classy, but it makes the garment that you're making so much more unique. Very cool. Mm. Oh my gosh. Now, you know, I have never been really truly interested until recently, uh, and I'll explain that, uh, for embroidery. But just in this last uh, 45 minutes that we've, you know, well, actually the last, what, maybe 15, 20 minutes we've been talking about this, I am so fully interested in embroidery because you can actually, based on what you're saying, you could actually create your own textile mm -hmm. just with embroidery. Which your, is what, got, your, that's really what got me into the embroidery. Cause I remember mm -hmm. thinking that's, I am, have no interest in that whatsoever. Cause I couldn't think mm -hmm. of an application. If I wanted to embroider the sleeves or something, I would just do it probably by hand. There's mm -hmm. a gown that I did. I might've sent you the photo done of a, I, I love doing handwork. I love doing hand beading. I love doing hand embroidery. Any of that I love. And mm -hmm. this was before I understood the machines. The machines in the old days were so difficult. Oh yeah, so there's the photo. That's oh all, my goodness. Yeah, that's all hand beaded. Now, um, here's the, the rest of the story. <laughs> this was for one of my last fashion shows and my friend Amy, who's a model and a spokesperson, I said, Amy, I can't bead one more minute because you know all of that is beaded and it's all little beads. My hands were, I thought it was actually getting carpal tunnel or something. They were curling up and I'm doing this at night. And this is before I was a spokesperson for daylight. So my light didn't have lights and magnifying glasses. And you know, my husband's like, you know, you don't have to bead the whole thing. My idea was to have beading all through here and then down through here. Well, you notice that it only covers here. Yeah. <laughs> I said, okay, which model has the smallest chest? And Amy's like, well, I'll wear it for you. And I said, all right. So she wore just like a nude color bra under it. And she made the dress look awesome. It's all satin at the bottom. Wow. <laughs> That's where my beading ended. <laughs> I decided I have to find 
something to be able to cover a whole bodice. And that's where the embroidery came in because the machines make it so easy now. You could scan in yeah. and you put your stuff around. And even if you only have like a couple hundred dollar machine, you still have a nice hoop and you can embroider and then just keep moving it around and embroider and add it wherever you need to. That's way faster than hand beading. <laughs> Although I, wow. still do that. I still hand bead. <laughs> but that's the that's rest of the story on that one. That's Can you maybe suggest a machine that's great for someone who's um, thinking about starting off um, embroidering versus someone, maybe a machine and someone who's at the other end, an expert? You know, Good question, um, Don. There's, so, there's such a different range. Now, uh, you know, mm -hmm. as being told, I am a spokesperson for brothers, so I'm a bit biased. <laughs> but at the same time, I've used their machines that are $200 that I bought off of Amazon, and I've used machines that are ten fifteen thousand dollars there's a huge you know you can spend whatever you want to spend on there but I bought my mom I think it was a six thousand I or six hundred I something like that I think it was maybe a hundred fifty dollars on Amazon I don't think that one did embroidery that was more for like just sewing and quilting she loves that machine she can carry it everywhere she loves it and then there was one I don't exactly remember the number but I want to say 940 I have an Amazon influencer page and I could leave you the link to give to your fans later, but I actually put the new machines that I've tested that I like of all price ranges that are, those are on Amazon. I mean, obviously if you uh -huh. spend a couple thousand dollars or more, you end up going to a dealer, but I save them on there, the ones that I've uh -huh. tested. Because I have a lot of friends that say, I'm just starting, I don't wanna spend more than $200, or I don't wanna spend more than $300, something like that. There's, uh -huh. um, if you wanna spend about $1,500 or something in that price range, there's something called the Q series, that's you have to have to go to a brother dealer for that but I tested those and they were really really good quality for embroidery and baby lock has a similar brand as that machine a similar machine is that if you have a baby lock dealer but those they had good quality easy to use all I have to say is if you're gonna get an embroidery machine I don't care what brand you get but the reason that I went with brother was because it was easy but if whatever your flavor is, just make sure that you understand the lingo. Because I had another brand, which I'm not going to mention, <laughs> for a lot of years, and I never embroidered on it ever because I couldn't understand it. I mean, it was, uh -huh. and and I <laughs> can sew on just about anything, but I didn't understand the way that they put things together. It was more complicated. Nowadays, a lot of it's easy. So just make sure you know how to use it. That's the thing. If you're going to spend a lot of money. If you go to a dealer, make sure that you can get free classes or classes of some sort. That's really important. And how can they find your Amazon um, page to look that up? If you go to, um, let's see, AngelaWolf.com. Which we actually have right here. I have a bunch of pictures to show you guys, <laughs> just in case you haven't seen Angela on the web, which I don't imagine there'd be many people. You just amazing stuff that you can find classes, yes, events, I've, fashion, and DIY because she doesn't only just because she does the pattern making from scratch, but she does do a lot of uh, DIY and kind of thrift repurposing, going from kind of meh to glam. So, um, check that out. Shop patterns and supplies, um, lots of stuff um, on her page. So, definitely check it out. Yeah, and if you click on that top blog post, which you don't have to click on it, but if it, usually that's episode 77, meaning I'm one week behind. I usually try to post the episode of Facebook on there. So if somebody's not on Facebook, they can actually watch the previous uh, episode. And so knowing that I'm one week behind, the link won't work for the giveaway. But there's a giveaway right now for winning a Brother Swine Machine, by the way, sponsored by all brands. So mm -hmm. um, wow. I will make sure that that link goes up tomorrow. If you don't, it's on my Facebook page. But if you're not on there, usually you click on that. And if you scroll down a little bit, at, there's a giveaway, which is that link won't work at this point. And then below that, it says um, the things I shop for on Amazon, my influencer page. And that's on there, too. So I try to keep all the links where you can find this stuff really easy. And I try to mm -hmm. put products in there that I use. It could be travel. It could be whatever. But a lot of the sewing things, because I don't want to carry this stuff on my website, and people will say, well, what are you know, where do I get this or you know, <laughs> which one's the good one? And then if I also use something and I don't like it, then I take it out of there. So it's really tested. <laughs> cool. cool but it does feel nice to know that it is has been tested and it's mm -hmm. something that you recommend. Um, goodness. Yeah. So we do have a lot of questions. Yeah. And um, we must say, and, and I just want to say, if 
any of you who have questions down there in the ask a question link if you would like to come on live and actually ask angela the question live and in person on stream uh live stream here please do so if it's in the comment section let dawn know and she'll get you set up and i also want to mention i did show you her um blog page um angela.com her website but she's also like we mentioned earlier on it's so easy on youtube um you can find her in lots of different places now if you're afraid that you might miss it or you didn't see it or what was that address mm -hmm. don't worry as always if you look up in the information um where you have to see the little three crowd cast guys if you're watching live and it says that's so i'm glad episode 105 at the end of that line there's a little upside down exclamation mark in a circle if you click that all the links are there angela was nice enough to provide us a lovely list of where you can find her as well as if you're watching uh, the replay on YouTube, all that information's in the description. So yeah. do not fear, you have not missed out there. You can find her on one of many places. Although my favorite honestly is on YouTube because you can watch the Facebook lives there as well as as well as many other things. But I love, I don't know, know I think- I, I used to post stuff on YouTube and then I kind of got out of it because I was just taping it so easy and things like that. And this year I said, okay, this year's the YouTube. I have so many episodes of it so easy that so every, Tuesday, I try to put a short tip. It could be from It's So Easy or something new. Thursdays are either a throwback Thursday or something like this Thursday. I'll give you a little tip. Tip <laughs> is um, already scheduled and it's taking a brown turtleneck where the collar was like to hear and turning it into a cute boat neck top. So I try to come up with something fun. So Tuesday, Thursday, and then Saturday is the replay of Facebook Live. And that's interesting because I was going to ask that question. On It's So Easy, you had... Um, I believe it was Laura uh, Piper. I think oh, Piper. she was actually she was actually taking a man's shirt mm -hmm. and turning it into a bomber jacket. Now, do you have your hands in every segment that's going on in there? Do you know? Okay. Uh, it's a little different. So, like sewing with Nancy was Nancy's show, and she, you know, that I'm comparing it to that, right? Uh -huh. It's so easy. Um, it's not my show. I'm the anchor or the host, whichever one you want to call the uh -huh. main. Well, I, I'm on a lot of the episodes and how it started was they had me audition for to be the host. And they said, we've decided to not have a host, meaning that I'm not going to interview anybody. So I was still I've been on there ever since the beginning. Um, I'm mm -hmm. very supportive of the show, obviously. And so I have my episodes that I do. So, for example, I was just today's tip was from season 12. I think I had, what we do is we tape one week in February and one week in August and you mm -hmm. tape all 13 episodes. So I think I had, I don't know, 10 episodes plus all these tips. So you can imagine you have to tape all of that in just a few days. And then you have other guests that are coming that are taping the own, their things that they've prepared. So mm -hmm. I'm not interviewing. They're not interviewing me. You're just doing your own thing, but it is, uh, okay. I don't want to say live because you don't have an audience there, but you have to get it in one swig. If you drop something or something like that, unless it's catastrophe, they'll stop. But usually it's just one roll. So a cute story about that is when I first started, I would talk really fast because you're either allowed four minutes, seven minutes or 12 minutes, or maybe longer if you're really lucky. And you're trying to get all of that in there. So I would talk really fast. And I won't even replay season one because I can't even understand myself. <laughs> but I remember somebody saying, oh, my gosh, she talks so fast. And so now I say, hey, it's on YouTube and you can put it in slow-mo. <laughs> it might change my accent a little bit, but it's all good. <laughs> That's great. Okay. And mm -hmm. Yes, we should get to those questions. Yeah. Okay, so we'll start off with uh, Rebecca Trivio, Trim, Trivino? Trivino. I'm very sorry if I said your name. If I said it wrong, feel free to come on camera and correct me. <laughs> <laughs> just, just teasing you, Rebecca. Um, do you have a favorite aspect of your professional life, Angela? I think the favorite aspect, two. One, continuing to design and come up with new things, which I absolutely mm -hmm. love. But number one ahead of that is just getting to meet it's such a difference now being able to meet people and inspire people. And I think that would probably be my, that'd be number one. Wow. Great question. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you, Rebecca. Rebecca. Uh, next question is from Denise. How do you get your ideas for pattern hacks? I'm always so inspired. Mm -hmm. We all are. 
<laughs> That's a great question. You know, the fashion design, like I said, it's just always something that has come to me. I used to keep a notepad next to the bed. I'd wake up in the middle of the night and sketch something, and I wake up the next morning and be like, "Oh yeah, I dreamt about that." That's just it's always been something of a just me. Yeah. But the upcycling, which I never cared about until I started going through my closet about two years ago and I'm like this fabric's so good I hate to get rid of it and then I realized <laughs> that oh there's a lot of people that are watching this and a lot of the young people want to start with that it's intimidating to cut out an outfit mm -hmm. and sew from scratch so I thought you know this could be a good way to entice somebody and that's where the pattern hacks come in too it's with the upcycling it's with changing a pattern it's no different you could go to the store and buy 12 patterns Probably all of them have the same bodice, but they all have different sleeves. So you might not realize that, but a lot of the patterns, if you buy the same company, if you have one thing that fits here, you can probably change the sleeves out of different patterns because it's all what you consider a sloper. So mm -hmm. if I, like this is my rouge T-top and my neckline is the twisted neckline, which you can probably hardly tell because it's leopard. But I also have this with a bell sleeve. So it's the same top, it's just I changed the sleeve. So I just come up with the ideas kind of I follow fashion trends, what's going on. Um, you can always tell if skinny jeans come in, the tops are gonna get baggy. If the jeans get baggy, the tops are gonna get tighter and shorter. I mean, it's just like, it's <laughs> yes. just what's gonna happen. <laughs> so um, it's just inspiration, fashion, things like that. And I also, I try to come up with good pattern hacks that are easy for people to do that can transform something that they have if they're a beginner or an advanced. Yeah, and we Great love question, our pattern hacks. We, we do, yes, great question. Okay, um, we have one from Carrie Cunningham. She's been very active oh, in the comments. Hi, Carrie. Thank you, Carrie, love to be hearing from you. <laughs> and a fantastic question too. Yes. What's on the horizon next, Angela? Oh gosh, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> what isn't, should be a quicker question. <laughs> well, I'm working on a couple of things this year. This year, 2000, I love December because I kind of reformat for the whole year. Now we're in May, so that's six months ago. But uh, this year, my goal was to launch my own online classes. To be able to have, you know, I have seven classes on Craftsy, six or seven on Pattern Review. I wanted to launch Angela Wolf Academy, which I did. My first class is Sewing with Knits. If I didn't give your guests a code um, to, for 20% off, here it is. I'll make sure that I activate it tonight. Lowercase letter, knit 20. Okay? And I won't forget. But it's at academy.angelawolf.com. So the code would be lowercase letter knit 20 before I forget that because I always give a discount if I can. But and it's this at 20, would give me more uh, the number 20? Uh, the 20 is the the 20 is the number 20 or yep. the the word number 20. 20. Lowercase okay. letter knit and then 20. And I'll make sure it's activated tonight as soon as I get off. But um, so this gave me, and this took me two years to, to test out different platforms of where I wanted to do this class. I'm very meticulous on things like that. And I also didn't want to launch it and not be able to maintain it or find out I used a website that I can't. I built all of my websites, except for this. I, I used a platform wow. to help build the back end of it because I, didn't ever, I never wanted it to fall down. So... Online classes is a big thing for me, and a lot of young people, that's how they learn, and that's where I can answer your questions. I mean, you can always send me an email, but isn't it much better if I just pop in here and say, hey, guys, let's <laughs> let's do a quick Q&A, or let me help you fix that. So I'm trying to, this year, come up with more classes that, are with, that involve live sessions in them, and that way you'll feel like you're getting value. Yeah. You can hang out with me, but it's not even about that. It's like you might say, hey, you know what? I can't get my pants to fit. <laughs> And people always send me photos, but see, that's a problem because I can't open those at the airport because people behind you wonder what you're looking at. <laughs> yeah, <true. laughs> So um, the online class is just a big thing. And then uh, into next year is going to be um, a membership site. So, and that's all I can tell you, Carrie. <laughs> but Carrie's awesome. By the way, thank you for being here, Carrie. Carrie's a very talented designer herself. And so kudos to you. Now, Carrie is always here with us. I didn't know that about Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes, and we also have uh, a question. We have two questions from Laurieann, and she is going to be fantastically brave and come on camera, so we are thrilled. Excellent. So we're gonna, yay, Laurieann. So we're inviting her on now. So um, as always, sometimes we're not 100% sure, you know, with people's, 
um, computer systems or internet browsers if they'll make it on. But we're lucky that Lorianne is here. Hello, Lorianne. Hi, Lorianne. Hi there. Oh, so excited to meet you. Uh, and hi to Don Myra, too. Hi, uh, welcome oh. back. I love your sewing studio. Hey, that's one of two rooms. <laughs> I'm a spoiled sewing girl. Yay. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, do you have children? I thought I saw that you had boys, and of course, your husband. Do you sew for them? Well, I actually, I don't have children. I wanted 10 and I was joking with Don and Myra that maybe I should have been more specific and asked for one. So at this point, no, but I'm the oldest of five kids and all my brothers and sisters are having kids now. So I'm like the spoiler aunt and my sister's pregnant with twin girls right now and she's due next month. Let's just say I am so excited. <laughs> I might have to uh, just take them home for a little while. <laughs> I'm the same way. I'm a very proud auntie, not a, a, a mother. And um, yeah, it's fantastic being an auntie. And yeah, it's kind of fun. Like I've sewn them some circle skirts. There, you can do a lot with those cute little yeah. cheeks and then you can send them home <laughs> when you give them chocolates. It's fabulous. My nieces are adorable, but a little hyper. Um, and Lori, you also have another fabulous question for us. I do. So I am currently watching a lot of sewing vlogs from England. Do you ever watch sewing vlogs on YouTube from England? That's a great question. Um, actually, sewing the sewing bee, was that what? No, that was British. Mm, well, yeah. kind of. The great British Geography sewing Geography's never yeah. been my forte, but um, <laughs> um, you know what? I don't. I usually, if I'm listening to videos or, list, or watching videos, it's usually trying to learn new sewing techniques, learn... Um, new social media, it's usually all business based. And I don't have a lot of time to watch a lot of that. I will scroll through and, but usually it's on Instagram for photos, quick, like really fast. Cause I don't have, what's your favorite by the way? Can I ask, Lori? Stitch Sisters, absolutely. And they're <laughs> going to do an event, a social in November. And I have decided to go there and meet up with other people that will also likely go there. And so I'm going to meet them all at once and travel through England. It's, wow. it's just a dream. I'm going to live it. That's awesome. Okay, I'm putting it on my list. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we had them on the show, uh, Angela. They're really yeah. lovely. They are. Yeah. Oh, I, I missed that. I can see why we watched that one. I missed that one. So thank you for telling me about that. Yeah, Rebecca says, I love me some Stitch Sisters. <laughs> <laughs> they were fun. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, Lorianne, thank you so yes. much for coming on. Thank today. you. We really thank do you, appreciate Lorianne. it. Great Love to meet you. you. Thank you. And I can't wait to hear more about your trip. Hopefully, you'll tell us about it when you go. <laughs> yes, please do. Okay. All right. Bye now. Bye. Okay, let's see. We have an old oh, question. Better get going. We're running a little late. So From Joe. Jo Joanne Mack, and I hope I said your name correctly. <laughs> uh, you featured a quilting technique for a blazer several years ago. It was wonderful and quite effective. Made several adaptations. Love from first to last stitch. Any more to come in the future, I hope. <laughs> that, okay, so I forgot about that when you asked me my favorite <laughs> sewing technique. My absolute favorite is the Chanel jacket. Chanel style, I should say. Uh, I have um, a class on pattern review that I did that was called the Contemporary Couture Jacket. And it's a quilted jacket, like a Chanel style. I named it that though, because I sew in the sleeves with the machine. I mean, it's like half couture and half not couture. Yeah. Because I just don't, I mean, a hundred hours is great, <laughs> but I'd like to finish it in like 40. How's that? <laughs> but, um, oh, wow. I love the silk linings, silk charmeuse linings, which usually I hand dye, and then the tweed on the outside and quilt that. That is absolutely one of my favorite techniques. I'm so glad you mentioned that. And I'm so glad that you, so you made one of these jackets or many of them. Mm -hmm. It just is so comfortable. It's like wearing a sweater. And I got to the point where I would buy some of the tweeds that were rayon blend so I could wash the fabric first. I wash all my silks first, then I quilt them, quilt them. And then I, I have a jacket that I've washed and dried many times. There's no interfacing in there. And it's just like the best sweater ever. So um, I don't have anything wow. new for that, but it's funny you said that because I just got in about four bolts of tweed that I want to test a few things on. So your ears must be burning. <laughs> I will share as soon as I'm ready though, as soon as it's up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she said she made several, also used silk saris for her lining. Oh, oh wow. Great idea. Oh, 
Okay. Thank you for that question. Um, Denise has a question. We'll get going. We have two left. Yeah. Um, how do you keep your nails looking so great with all that? <laughs> <laughs> Denise. Well, you should have seen them on Sunday. Usually my routine, I paint them myself, believe it or not, but it's just because I'm always traveling. So on Sundays on the boat, if we're having a slow day of fishing, I will take the nail polish off. <laughs> and then if it's really <laughs> slow, I paint them out there too. But um, yeah, I just, uh, I paint them every week. Nothing special. I take a lot of vitamin E with the sun and vitamin E. And uh, that's about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's see. Next question we have. Actually, this is the last question. It's from Linda, and it says, "What will be your next online class?" Mm -hmm. Well, I actually have three in the works. <laughs> so one is specializes in jackets, and it's everything different with sleeves. Sleeves that seem to be a really big hangup for people. Sewing them in, mm -hmm. as basic as sewing them in, and also something with pattern hacks. And I have divided. I've taped part of the class, it's not quite finished, but it, I haven't decided if I'm gonna divide it into two so they could be a little bit less expensive. And if you're a beginner, you can go to the beginning side. And I would love for people to vote because <laughs> that's what I'm gonna be voting on my Facebook Live. Because some people are so afraid to sew a sleeve in. I mean, well, okay, have you girls ever had, and guys, ever had a pattern where the sleeve cap is like four inches of ease and you're like reading the directions going, how am I going to ease all that in there? Right? So, and I'm not slamming any designers or anything like that, <laughs> but you know, there, it's like basic math. That's not going to work. And yes. if you see somebody walking around where they have all the puckers right here and then on the back side yes. they have them right here. So you know which direction they sewed their sleeve in. So little simple things like that will be as part of this next class. And then the second part of that class is all about sleeves. Um, and that's different styles of sleeves. You know, nowadays, I used to always wear a suit jacket, but it wasn't even, but it was with jeans. And nowadays, they're coming back in, which I'm so excited about. But it's not necessarily the suit jacket. It's more of like a jacket to go over your longer top and things like that. And that's yeah. why I thought this is, this is definitely the season to talk about sleeves. If it's vented, zippers, embroidery, yeah. slits, you know, you name it. You can have one t one top or one jacket with a million sleeves. So those are exactly. the two. Can't tell you the rest, but those are the two that are in the immediate work. So thank you for asking. Awesome. <laughs> and, um, awesome. th this um, I'll be celebrating when they're ready. And I also have a few more patterns that are just about finished. One is a one arm sleeve with, that's very cute. I've been showing it on my Facebook Live, and a pair of leggings, and then workout pants. So. I, I don't know when you say it, quite honestly. I do. <laughs> yeah, um, we see, I see in the comments that uh, Diane says, show me the tweet when you were talking about your jacket. Yeah, it's. An, I wish, you know, if it was here, I'll bring it on my Facebook Live on Wednesday. The one that I've washed, you won't believe how many times I've washed this. In fact, on my Facebook Live one time, I was with Wynn fishing in that jacket, and I was hand-stitching. So if, if you've never made a Chanel-style jacket, you quilt every single piece, like the, the front, the side front, the all separate then you fold the lining back and you sew the garment together and then you fold the lining and press it and hand stitch the lining close so there's still a lot of hand stitching and i get my happy hand stitching in but this jacket i will bring on there because it's hand dyed it's hand stitched on a boat while we were in snowing <laughs> and i remember telling when i can't bring this jacket on the boat he said you hand dyed it there's red in it what difference does it make if fish blood gets on it so i will bring it <laughs> on the show on wednesday so everybody can see it and you won't believe that i've washed that at least 20 times at least and it looks absolutely brand new it's very cute so it'll inspire you all to just jump in and try to put to her jacket on something easy now that's the one thing and that it has to do with sewing related that horrifies me. I mean, truly horrifies me. And I've not done it yet. And that's dye fabric. And, oh, Myra, um, you have to. You did. <laughs> I need to come you over. You it. need to come over. <laughs> did, did you do a class on pattern? You did a class on pattern review, didn't you? I did. Where you actually, you actually shipped out all of the materials that you needed. You remember that? I actually still have mine. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. <laughs> and you know what? I only shipped out product for that for two years because then the, uh, I don't know, there was some something with the mail that we weren't allowed to ship those anymore. And uh -huh. unless I got all these licenses and I was like, all right, guys, I'm going to give you a list of what to buy. That'd be much better. So 
I know that I would I say it. Well, bad though, so you're good. <laughs> you made it so look so easy. I thought, oh my God, this is going to be amazing. And then when I got my kit, I opened it up and went, oh my gosh. And that's where I left it. <laughs> so just I'm so you know, my mom, I filled up all those little containers myself. <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> So here's Myra, your, I think you should. Here, I think you should die by the end of the year, Myra. I think you should throw down the challenge right now. There it is, Myra. No, can, you can, see you can die I be so a bowl for next year, please? <laughs> I'm, in it, I'm in there with you. And the only tip is to make sure you wear gloves, because do you yeah, remember my gloves. Yeah. Do you remember my Smurf comment that when I first started dyeing <laughs> fabrics and I had the dark blue in one side and orange on the other and the gloves <laughs> came off and I was like, oh, who cares? And I just kept going. Yes. And then I look like a all blue. <laughs> it looked like a Smurf that just ate a bag of Cheetos. And my husband's like, what have you been doing? <laughs> so don't forget your gloves. Okay. Yeah. You included those in the box too. <laughs> We had a, a quick question here from Mary about what you were talking uh, about the classes you were talking about, the ones that are coming up about sleeves. She wanted to know if the classes were going to be on the academy you were speaking of or if they're going to be somewhere else. They're going to be on the academy, academy.angelawolf.com. And I will oh. announce it on Facebook. If if you're not on Facebook, if you go to angelawolf.com and sign up for my newsletter, whenever I have a new, I don't really bombard people with a lot of newsletters because that's like, I'm really bad at that for not sending out them quite frequently, <laughs> but you won't get one more than once a week. And it's usually just hits of what's going on. Like some, so if it's a new class, if it's a discount, if it's something like that, um, it's all in there. And then the other place that I announced it is if you are on Facebook, I have a Facebook group that's Angela Wolf Patterns Facebook group. And you don't have to just sew my patterns. It's if I inspired you to sew something, if you saw something on It's So Easy, the Upcycle Projects. If you're looking for a group of friends to hang out, that's a fun group. Carrie's in there. There's I see quite a few. Linda Chester's in there. I see quite a few names popping up here that, hi, girls. <laughs> <laughs> And don't forget um, her Facebook Lives if you go to Angela Wolf Patterns on Facebook. Um, Wednesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I can honestly say you don't want to miss them. They're very, very fun, interesting. You learn a lot. So don't miss that either. But we have already taken yes, have. far too much of your time. But I did warn you we could do like six shows on you, Angela, and not yes. even scratch the surface. <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> I I have really really enjoyed hanging out with you girls and all the guests that are Thank here you. and I would love to come back anytime if I have something new and exciting that you want to hear about you just holler and I'm in oh my awesome <laughs> means yes. I have to clean that side of the house right <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> well thank you again so much I mean this has been a true honor um, to actually get an opportunity to interview and ask you questions like I said I still have many more questions so I'm so happy you agreed that you could possibly come back for some oh, more absolutely Thanks, Myra. I just want to double check. I put a different sewing code in the description. Um, it just uh, from the, the email you sent me earlier. So it's um, knit 20 is the new code instead of the one that I have written there. Oh, the one that you have. Just double check. The one that I sent you yes. is actually, thanks for mentioning that. OK, so there's a couple of okay. things I sent. The capital knits 20 is for my website. If yep. anybody wants any patterns or fabric, I have some new fabrics I'm launching tomorrow. And mm -hmm. that's capital letter, not to make this totally confusing. What was the code that I sent you? Oh, wasn't it um, Sewing Blab? Yeah, I didn't want to say it in case it wasn't. Yeah, active, that one is active you know, right now. It, yep, so if you want to- Sewing find, Blab 20. Yep, Sewing Blab 20. That's to AngelaWolfPatterns.com. And that's for any- That is site. amazing. Yes, and I will let it, I will let it go for a month, so. You're good, girls, even if you don't want something. Now I have new patterns coming out, so it'll be good for that, too. Um, and then the lowercase letter, knits 20, which I will activate as soon as I hang up here with you guys. Um, that's for Angela at or academy.angelawolf.com. That's for the knits class. Okay. So the knits class, that is, and that's uh, that. the reason that I started my own was because I could have a little bit more control. Like at Craftsy, you can have seven lessons and not that I wanted to fit everything into one class, but that was my first one. And some people don't have a serger. Some people don't want a serger. Yeah. Some people don't want to use a sewing machine. So I split the class into, I think, 24 videos. So if you have a sewing machine only, you can just skip ahead to those. 
If you only have a serger, you can skip ahead to those. So I laid it out where you could, and you could watch it any time, but you can go back and pick what you want out of it. So you don't have to watch all, I don't know, six hours or something of it, but you can pick what you need. So for the next classes, they won't be quite that long. They'll be a little bit more specific to certain things. So you'll know exactly what you're getting. It's definitely the age of knits, just like it's the age of social media. We've, um, I, I guess we kind of were knit and then went woven and now we're kind of more knit again because there's a lot of books coming out. Yeah. Uh, uh, people who've been on the show before, like uh, Johanna from The Last Stitch and uh, even Tilly and the Buttons over in uh, England. There's lots of knit books and things coming out. So it's like people are dipping their foot in the toe of knits. We you know, might have been a little worried before. And that course sounds like a great way that would make people very confident, very fast in using knits because they are just so comfortable. I guess that's that's the thing about them, isn't it, Angela? They're comfortable, they're easy. If you travel, you roll them up in a suitcase. And you know, the jackets that we were talking about or the jeans that I, so they take eight hours or the jackets take 10 or 20. A knit top, my goal has been to make a new knit top for every Wednesday show. And so I usually pop in that morning and it's done in 45 minutes. Now in the show, it might not be hemmed, which you'll, I always usually <laughs> joke about that. <laughs> but you can make a knit top once you have a pattern that fits in less than an hour. So that's kind of like having a craft project. Mm. Very well. Okay, we have definitely taken way too much of your yeah. time. Um, but yeah, thank you so, so very yes. much for coming on Angela. We really do appreciate it. And Make sure to join us next week, everyone, when Anika Truman from Made to Sew will be joining us. So Thanks. that's it, everyone. Myra, thank you so much. You're for very welcome. Thank you, everyone, for showing up. It was so fun. It's so different being on this side. Usually I'm interviewing everybody else. So <laughs> <laughs> this was a lot of fun. Well, thank you again. Great. And um, for all of you who joined us tonight, thank you all. And we'd love to see you all again next week, Tuesday, on That Sewing Blab at 7.30. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Angela. Thank you. Thank you Angela. <laughs>